There we go. How's it going? Okay, we are doing this. Oh boy, Gio, are you going to be teaching the class today? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, you think so, huh? Hmm. Where do your ascenders go? How about your descenders? Uh, I'm. Ah, what letter is that? Is that a Q? Oh my gosh. What letter are we doing today, Gio? Shape. All of the shapes. That is really interesting. You know, I never really thought about teaching the letter of the day as all of them at the same time. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I think you're onto something. <laughs> well, today we are going to be drawing all the shapes at the same time. Just kidding. We are going to be drawing the letter T today as soon as I'm able to wrangle my computer back. I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen. I have my mug. Oh. <laughs> Hold on, I, I gotta show you guys. Uh, it's a dino letter. It is a dino letter. It is. It is. It is all kinds of letters right there. All right, I have, so, I have a really funny story to tell you guys. Hold on, before I show you, Morgan has this mug. When we became parents, I thought it would be funny for our first Christmas. Um, you know all those like n number one mom mugs, number one dad mugs, whatever. So since we're two moms. I thought it'd be funny to hand letter a mug and have it made like at Costco. Uh, and when Morgan opened this mug, um, instead of laughing like I thought she was going to, she actually cried. But we still have the mug, and here it is. I laugh at it now. Postpartum hormones the first time around. Was it exactly laughing? Like, you know, I still think a, it's funny. A little bit of rage. I still think it's any, funny. Um, type lettering lessons you want to? With the with the mug. Yeah. What do you have to say about your lettering? Here the uh, well, you know, more than, important than the lettering, um, never tell your wife she's number two at anything. I think that is the lesson that I learned. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So we are not going to be playing uh, games on the iPad, Geo. We are going to be lettering. Your iPad's over here, though. Hun, can you grab his iPad? Um, thank you guys all for joining us. Me, we. Today we are going to be getting started pretty shortly. Um, if you guys haven't ordered your We Will Always Figure It Out postcards, those are on our website, ready to go. Um, there's been a little bit conf of confusion, so the postcard is a dollar to for us to produce and mail for you. So if you pay a dollar, we will ship a mail this and post. Blah, 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 blah. We will ship and mail this postcard for you. We'll put a stamp on it. We'll address it by hand. We will send this postcard to anyone you want us to um, with a postcard stamp. Um, if you want to donate more than a dollar, then we will be able to send out more of these postcards to more people so that they'll be able to send them. So the way that the pricing is... It's like a pay it forward. Yeah. It's like a pay it forward kind of deal. But if you have any questions, you let us know. All right. <clears throat> um, also, also on our porch... Uh, What's on our porch today? Six more boxes of puzzles. O-M-G. We have some new styles. Very popular. I think they're going to be um, celestial, like oh. uh, star chart. Awesome. One. And then we also have one that is oh, um, trees, which is really beautiful. Um, and kind of like akin to the National Park one, which we're sold out of again. Oh, boy. So, um, while I plug my kid in, check out the new puzzles. I'll put a little um, picture of them in stories. But check out the puzzles, see what you think. This is artwork from our beautiful friend, Alin, on the wall. She's beautiful, and she makes beautiful work. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the whole puzzle thing has been really interesting. You know, um, we, have, we have had a retail shop here in downtown Colorado Springs. And we have an online shop, but historically we've only sold our own work on our online store. Um, got yeah, because we were just like, it, it did well enough. The online store was always just kind of like a supplement to our, the rest of our business, which was mostly um, wholesale, uh, wholesale greeting cards that we would wholesale to like other stores. So I think there's over 800 other stores that carry our work. But when this whole virus thing happened, nobody was ordering cards anymore because everybody was closed so our wholesale, uh, wholesale stores lots of personal people. right 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 so our retail stores stopped placing wholesale orders with us because all the stores had closed down like ours did and then we weren't getting any 
uh, income from our retail store that we had because we sell our store our stuff and other people's stuff in our store. So that also went down. So our online store was the only thing really open, the only thing really sort of generating income for us at this time. And we were like, oh, I guess we should add a couple more things besides cards. So we started selling puzzles, and it's amazing, and they're beautiful, beautiful puzzles. They come in this great packaging. And I have all kinds of beautiful stuff coming for your mother's, oh, for yeah. Mother's Day. And so we're trying to get it online in the next week. But yeah. you know, there's only so many hours in the day. So we've really pivoted um, our business I hate, model. I hate that word. Pivoted. Should, sorry, we you turned make a card about the coronavirus that involves the word. Pivot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we, we quickly shifted on our the balls of our feet. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Okay, so sorry. It's like startup culture. All right, yeah, we're like, we're scrappy. We don't use the word pivot. I forgot. I didn't get the memo today. Um, but we started selling more things on our online shop. So keep your eyes on our online shop, Ladyfingers we'll Letterpress. We posted about it, but. And we will have a lot more goodies, especially coming up for. Uh, Mother's Day. We missed the Easter man wagon. We missed Easter. We hope the Easter bunny hasn't forgotten us, though. Uh, okay, so Morgan. Yes. Will you do the honors and I want, uh, I want, uh, move the phone on me so we can? I want to get the if need if help? this is your first time joining us, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like you are in for a treat. Beatbox. We are like teaching a hand lettering no, class, and we're also. No at home with our three small children. So, uh, this will be interesting. This will be exciting. You will, you may uh, get some laughs about my parenting. Um, Pink fong, is that what you're Parenting saying? styles. Pivot no, in this moment no. is totally appropriate, okay? <laughs> Everybody's pivoting, I guess. We're all pivoting. Pink Alrighty. It's not a pink fong. Pink fong, yeah, that's pivoting. the pink baby shark people. Yeah, they, they have a ping germ pong. song now. Oh, he they, does, they do have a germ. Too. They pivoted too. Everybody's pivoting. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Are you filming with drinking water? Yeah, hydrate. Everyone, drink water. Stay hydrated. The black iPad's not working right now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, kiddo. So we have uh, one baby sleeping upstairs, one baby in a little swing outside our door. We have our toddler here watching Baby Shark. I think he's approaching like kid stage. When does toddlerhood end, you guys? Uh, Anyone? These days are 11, 12. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he's still on hold. We're on a group chat with um, the guys from <laughs> Bench Press, Sapling Press, uh, Power and Light Press. Yellow Owl Workshop and uh, Lisa from um, Rock, Paper, Scissors. scissors and People are going to be sad they're not included now. Well, it's really funny because Lisa sent us a screenshot that she was on hold for six hours with some government office. And, uh, unemployment. Uh, oh, it was unemployment? Yeah. And that was yesterday, and we just got a text from Andy from Bench Press asking if Lisa was still on hold. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt if she was. Um, all right, so let's draw some teas. We are going to start with our mono weight. Oh my goodness, that is very thick and chunky. That is too big. I was doing some custom stationery and I used a different pen for that, but I'm back to my old standby here. So we're going to do mono weight. Someone says there are many toddler stages now. My sophomore is going through one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oops. I'm going to move your screen. Okay. We also had someone ask today. They sent us a little DM. They couldn't find the letter H. Can somebody help me on the yeah. game? Maybe they can help you. Uh, yeah, so the letter, all of our classes are up on our YouTube channel. Um, if you've missed anything or if you want to go back, except the letter H. For some reason, the letter H didn't save to my phone, and I wasn't able to record it, like screen record it uh, later on that day. Um, so I apologize. Letter H is missing. Yeah. Um, I'm sure we'll get there someday, guys, yeah. but at the moment, there's just... Uh, I apologize. There's some... I will take it back. There are some little highlights of letter H and other letters Arlie was doing. I feel like maybe if you have time at the end of every session, yeah. you should be like, and here's the, the letter H. H. Yeah. Um, but... Well, I'll, I'll give you a little... Um, I'll give you a little uh, tip here. Your letter, letter H starts with, starts with the state, same stem as your capital T will, so if you... Start with that line, you will be 
you'll be well on your way. Uh, but since we're doing a mono weight sans serif, we are going to be doing a one weight sans serif, which means no contrast, and sans serif meaning sans without serif. Um, I hear Rolly singing out there in the, in the living room. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are going to start with our nice, sturdy, single weight stem of this T. I'm going to kind of square it off from the cap line to the baseline. And I'm going to try to make this as uniform as possible. And if you guys have been following me, I feel like maybe possibly you have been falling into the same sort of sizing, like width-wise, perhaps. Uh, let's try to maintain that width when we're drawing our capital T. And we really want to be aware of this axis point right here. So this axis is really flowing through the center of that stem. So you want to make sure that your um, crossbar is also centered along that stem and you want it to be uniform and you want it to be the thickness of this to equal the thickness of this stroke um, it may take a little bit of practice it's, it sounds easier than it actually is um, so if you need to practice a few times I'm gonna go get um, I will not judge you do you want me to scoot you up um, here actually I feel like my tea could use a little beefing up here in the do you want to put it on stem. here? There we go. And I'm trying to really square these edges off as much as possible, but um, my my pen has a sort of round roundness to it, so it's a little um, little it gets a little rounded. But ideally, if I was working in pen and ink with like a micron on some nice um, marker paper, I would try to make that nice crisp lines. Um, we can, you know, we can also do a mono weight T. Oops, I started with the cross. Sometimes, if you if you feel better doing the um, crossbar first, you know, if that helps you visualize that center point, um, go for it. There's no, um, you must draw oh, the stem a first. Train. Your train? Oh, it's a blue train. Let's get out my train box. Let me see. Ooh, that's beautiful. I love it. It's all blue. Yeah. So if it helps you uh, to sort of hash out that center point first and then kind of thicken that up around that, that works too. Did you say somebody had a question? Oh, someone said maybe you could just post a screenshot of the letter H. Because don't you have a layer I of do. the letter yes. H? I do, yes. H is somewhere I will do that. When I get around to posting my teas tonight or tomorrow morning I will also post my H maybe I'll like I'll have a nice little song that goes in the background so YouTube can play it for an hour um, although I have to tell you guys a funny story when I was in college I made a YouTube I made I had a video class I had like a music video class and um, I made a video and it's called how to win as a Siamese twin and I thought it was hilarious. I had my two friends who were kind of like the same size in height share this like gigantic I love New York t-shirt. And um, one was this like accomplished author and was this like a real mover and a shaker. And the other twin, Siamese twin, was like really kind of like kind of sad and kind of mopey. Um, and so it just kind of followed this like New, like New York Minute author and her Siamese twin who was just kind of along for the ride. Um, and it w and I have like a, a jillion YouTube views on it, but um, they end up at a karaoke bar where they sing Bizarre Love Triangle, which I thought was hilarious. Nobody, I don't know if anybody picked up on it, but uh, we can't, I can't like monetize the video because it's, I don't have the copyright for those songs they sing karaoke to. Oh, the drama. All right, so yeah, mono weight can be skinny, mono weight can be thick. It just has to be pretty much, you know, this equals this basically. Um, if we want to draw our lowercase t in the mono weight sans serif style, so the lowercase t is kind of a funny little letter. Um, it doesn't go... So, okay, if you guys have been with me by now, we're aware of this uh, mean line here, which basically is the line where all of your lowercase letters go to. So your A or your E, or if you have a, a lowercase letter that's like a, a D, you know, your ascender goes all the way up to the ascent line, goes above the cap line, 
goes way up to this line up here, this blue one. However, our lowercase t is a lowercase letter that does not go to the mean line, nor does it go to the cap line, nor does it go to the ascender line, ascent line. It just kind of sits kind of right somewhere in between this area. So it's a little confusing, but bear with me. It's a really fun little letter to draw. So um, you can start your lowercase t and give it a little bit of a, of a loopy um, terminal there at the bottom. And again, we're really trying to maintain that um, uniform thickness throughout the letter. And I think I got a little too thick there in the curve, so I'm gonna kinda of thicken that out there. And then my next, uh, my next, for my next trick, we're gonna do our crossbar. And I like making the crossbar just slightly over the, um, slightly over the mean line. It doesn't have to sit exactly on it, but just somewhere kind of over it. And just like when we drew our lowercase f's, our crossbar is shorter on this side and longer on this side. Although I feel like I kind of made it a little bit, oops, longer than that terminal on the bottom, which it shouldn't be. It should actually be a little bit, just a little bit tucked in there. So, um, so yeah, you want it shorter on the left, longer on the right. Um, you don't have to make this a uh, little, um, you know, sort of curved shoulder on the bottom. There are some uh, lowercase t's that do not have that feature. Although, um, I don't know actually any off the top of my head, and I don't even know if that crossbar is centered on those or if if I feel like it should be centered. I should, probably should have looked up this up before I started my class today. Um, it's like this; it just kind of looks like a like a cross. But maybe that's how that that works. I'll have to do a little bit more digging. Oh, also. Look at my train. Holy moly. That is beautiful. It's full of people. That's great. Um, I also want to send an update to those of you who are with me with my capital R's. I'm going to just take a little side, side note break here. So our uppercase R's in the Helvetica, I was tearing up my hair being like, how the heck? Does this little leg sit on an R in Helvetica? Because I was talking about the differences between um, a Helvetica R and an Arial R. And um, I went back and I finally looked at it, and it goes, it goes a little something like this. So we're going to make basically make our capital P shape. So it goes down, right, like this. And then, get this, it goes, just goes, meow. It has a teeny tiny, I mean, it's really kind of barely noticeable. Ooh. Um, and it's really, okay, so I was, oops, I was spending a little bit more time looking at it, and it's like the t top and the bottom are pretty much aligned, except for this teeny tiny little, pink little, little toe out in the middle of nowhere. So you're, Uppercase R's, for those of you who are just dying of suspense. Well, what was, how that was going to resolve. It's actually like so, 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 so tiny. It's a little bit tinier. It's like, like that. It's like that tiny. Um, so forgive me for not remembering how that went earlier in our series. But I may also want to get back to you about this lowercase t. I would say stick with this guy because that's the guy I know and love and draw all the time. And you can't go wrong with that one. I would avoid these guys. Now um, look at my train. Oh, wow. You got the blue train going. That's great. It has no people here. It has no people. So we are going to um, switch over to our sans serif styles with contrast. 
now. And contrast meaning um, um, a, a variation between thicknesses in your uh, vertical strokes and your horizontal strokes. So one more time, folks. A little, little uh, recap on our cheat sheet here. If you have a stem that is up and down, it is going to be thick. If you have a crossbar that goes left and right, it's going to be thin. If you have a upstroke that goes to the right, it's going to be thin. And if you have a, a downstroke to the right, it is going to be thick. Now, there are some letter forms that um, are exceptions to these rules, but for the letter T, we are pretty much going to stick with this, um, this rule. So for our, our contrast sans serif, uh, we are going to be drawing our stem, and, and this might actually be easier drawing um, the stem first in this occasion. So drawing the stem nice and thick, pretty um, uniform in width. And then our crossbar, we're just gonna, it's not gonna be exactly um, like the width of my st stroke. I'm just gonna make it a little bit thinner there so it's um, a little bit more visible. But um, you'll notice that this width is thinner than that width. Now if we shoot on over to, oh, I, but one more thing before I go start with the lowercase. Um, the width of this T, should also be similar to the width of like your capital E and your capital F. Um, you don't want it, I mean, you could make it very wide, but uh, with all letter forms, you just wanna be really aware of, of the balance of that letter. You don't want it to be too like obnoxiously um, unbalanced because then it'll just seem like it'll be falling over or it'll be out of place. Um, I, I would say just, you know, no matter how wide you're getting with, with this contrast. Play. Hi, baby. Wow, that's, that's cool. That's a lot different than the last one you built. Um, always strive for balance and harmony in that other form so it looks like um, it is stable and sturdy and strong all on its own, um, even when it's within the context of a word. So with our... Um, lowercase t's. Again, we're going to start with our little hook shape there, contrast, and then we're going to get a little thinner there. What do you think, Rolly? And then for our crossbar, again, we're going to be just a little, a little thin, thinner than the, the stem. That's funny, huh? Uh, I, want, I, want, I actually kind of want to draw that crossbar over again because I want it to be a little bit thinner. Mm. I think I was zoning out. Why are we not going all the way to the ascender line? It just does not go there. Okay. Don't go there. Cause I, ain't I, ain't I had the Dangerous Mind soundtrack when I was a teenager and I really thought I was a real bad kid for having that soundtrack. But that was one of the songs. Anyway. Um... Yes, the lowercase t does not go to the A center line, does not go to the cap line, does not go to the mean line. It goes somewhere in between this zone. So you can experiment with that placement. Also, you'll notice that my crossbar here is just slightly shorter than that, the, that bottom terminal. And I just kind of like the way that looks a little bit better. Um, and again, if you really want like some uh, FaceTime, I think Kristen's FaceTiming. No. Uh, if you really want some nice beefy contrast with that sans serif, this is really cute. I like this one. You just want to make sure that you're balanced, you're legible. That is a cute little fat T. Hey, Gio, can you put your headphones on, please? I can hear you. I know, but you know what? The microphone is right next to the phone. So I want people to be able to hear what I'm talking about. But, can I help you put your headphones on? I really, but I can, can I can I help? Can I assist in this situation? May I assist you, sir? Do you think a chocolate egg would help you? 
Oh my god. Okay, Bot is gonna put the headphones on. I'm gonna get your chocolate egg. What color? Blue. Blue. Okay. Yes, we bribe our children with books and carrots here in, in our household. Just kidding. It's, I, it's iPads and chocolate. <laughs> this is desperate times over here. If you are the kind of person that bribes your kid with carrots and books, man, I please tell me, tell me your ways. How do you do it? Um, so this guy is super thick. It is a very, very, very bold, heavy lowercase t. Um, but you know what? Don't you you, want, you don't want it to be too bold that you can't see, um, you know, the crossbars or this little tail that that really define that letter. Um, so have fun with your letters, but don't make them too crazy that you can't tell what they are. And really try to make sure that um, this uh, width is kind of similar to that width. So let's scoot on over to um, serif T's, because T's have quite a few serifs. Um, and for those of you who have been following along, we know that the serif are those little feet on the bottom of our stem, and that I like to draw those feet as part of that initial form. You can add them later if you like, but I, I like the way that the, the bracket um, is sort of naturally formed Hello. when you're doing that as part of the initial stroke. Hello. Morgan's going to take a phone call. So let's draw a stem there. Hello. No um, serif on the top because we're going to add a crossbar. And then what I like to do is um, create my serif, kind of come across, and then bring that back. So notice I have this sort of um, really like nice bracket here, inner bracket to that serif that very rounded shape to it. Uh, I just like the way that that kind of just fills it out. Uh oh, Gio. Hold on a second. Are you all right? Yes. Okay, we're just gonna reposition here for a moment. Hold on. Hey, Gio. Gio, Gio, Gio. Listen, buddy, I need you to take your food off the table, honey. Okay? Sorry, folks, we just had some uh, excuse me, hold on, see you. Sweetie, did you see what happened when you did that? Did you see what happened when you did that? It knocked the phone down, okay? So we can't knock the phone down, okay, sweetie pie? Yep, okie dokie. All right, listen, if you can't keep your feet off the table, I'm gonna have to move you to another room, okay, hon? I need you to keep your feet off the table. Put them on this chair, ready, right there. Put them on this chair. Good, thank you. All right, let's try this again. Um, oh my gosh, is that Jeffrey Alexander? Jeffrey Alexander, how are you? We, I worked with Jeffrey in um, Providence. And my mother-in-law, hi Lorna. We miss you, I wish we could be having a margarita with you right now. This is fun. Um, Geo. All right, hold on one second. Geo. Look at this kid. Look at him. Yeah, you think that's real funny, don't you? You think that's real funny? You think that's so funny? You think you're a funny goose? All right, sit up, please. Okay, hold on, Robin. We're gonna have a little, uh, uh, we're just gonna have a little, little intermission here. Hi, sweetie. I need you to take your feet off the table, okay? Yes, these feet. These stinky, dirty feet. All right, I'm being serious, bub. I know. Come here. Let's go get your let's go get your chocolate egg. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go get a chocolate egg. Bring your iPad. Or I'll bring your iPad. We're gonna have a phone call. We're just gonna we're just gonna take a little breather over here. No, I give my kids. Some, you want a Jolly Rancher instead? Okay. Sorry, folks. A blue Jolly Rancher. Wait, okay. Yeah, sure, because we got nothing else going on here, kid. A blue Jolly Rancher. I'm not a pushover, I swear. 
Okay, here you go, bud. Now I need you to be quiet for the rest of my class, okay, hon? Anyone else want a Blue Jolly Rancher while I'm at it? You good? Okay. So uh, with our capital T's, um, we're gonna create that nice um, serif on both sides and a full serif on the bottom of that T. And remember you wanna try to maintain that um, axis right in the center of that stem. So um, if, you're, if you're feeling like you're leaning a little bit left or right, just kind of thicken that up on one side or the other to make sure that that T is standing nice and strong and centered. Um, if you want to try experimenting with some different serifs, the T is a real fun, um, is a real fun letter to do that on. You know, you can do some more like slabby slabby slab serifs let's do one like this this is kind of nice slabby mcslab serif that was his name and you'll see that you know my initial strokes are not necessarily um the, the most perfect um, form initially, but I really use that opportunity to go back and fill in that shape to really help um, fill it out and even it out and make it a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more full and uh, to my liking. This is kind of a cool tee. And you know what? I, while I'm drawing this, I'm wondering, can I angle? Yeah, I can totally bring that bracket down. And you see how you just kind of like start drawing a letter form and you're like, ooh, what would happen if I did this? And you kind of arrive at this kind of totally new shape that you didn't really think you were going to be starting with. But um, that's kind of a fun little tee that just has a totally different set of serifs here. Um, and if you know, and you could even go so far as to making like a T, you know, here's your stem, here's your crossbar here. Oops, I'm gonna make it a little bit more straight. You could even do a T with like really severe serifs like that. That's actually a little bit too severe serif on the bottom, I would say. Because then you start looking like an I. And again, legibility is key. So um, your uppercase serif T, as long as you have a stem and a crossbar and serifs on three ends, it qualifies as a uppercase T in the serif style. And we are going to move on to our lowercase T in the serif, serif style. And the way I like to draw my lowercase t's, I like, you know how I have always talked about this little slope, you know, when I start my like letter N's or letter I, um, you know, if I was doing my N, I would kind of make it look like that. Well, my lowercase t's are, he's in the kitchen eating a Jolly Rancher. Sorry, I, I did my best. <laughs> All right, so our lowercase t, we're gonna maintain this like funky little slope here. And, but we're gonna bring that up to uh, a top of the mean line and somewhere landing you know, in between the, the mean line and the cap line. And then we're gonna um, just kind of, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I just sort of eked it out a little bit. It's just like a, a tiny, tiny little nub over there. And I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna give myself like a little bit more of that tail and right now you're kind of saying to yourself, like, what the heck are you drawing? What is this? I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to use that as the crossbar. And then right where that intersection happened, I'm going to pull that down and finish out that little uh, T there. That is a cute T. Although I think that my... 
um, terminal there is a little bit too far out. So I'm gonna try going back here. So right now I'm going to, there we go, I think that's a little bit better. I think I was trying to make that a little bit too wide before. But that's a cute little tee also. Now I have seen some tees with a little teardrop terminal at the end. That's kind of a cute thing to do, if you would like. This, I feel like I'm, I'm, my, my thickness is getting a little bit too deep into that um, axis territory. So I'm just gonna kind of use my eraser and kind of get rid of that. Uh, when you're drawing these little um, tapers here, you really wanna try to make that inside point as small as possible and really use that outer point to really round it out and and really like sort of pinch it until it until it is just like stroke width at the bottom um, if you don't want to do this sort of slopey sloperson stuff you can do a um, just like a squared off T on the top almost like our, our sans serif style, and make your crossbar um, along the side there too. So a couple different ways you can do your T, but I just feel like these have so much more personality and I really like those. <laughs> yeah, Roland, I know. I know which one you like. You like the teardrop terminal, don't you? Yes, you do. Um, I, you know, the teardrop terminal is a fun little thing, um, a fun little add-on. It, uh, you know, adds a little bit of personality and some characteristics to it, but I wouldn't go so far as, you know, making a uh, real full, uh, thick terminal there at the end. Um, for me, it's just a little distracting. Um, so I tend to keep the ends, the terminals really thin, either thin or teardrop terminal. I, I don't usually add the thickness there. Uh, it, it, it can be done. Some people some people do it. So there's some um, typefaces that have it in lettering style that do have it. But um, I would be very selective in that because you don't want it to start um, uh, closing up that negative space because that negative space is so important with um, determining that the shape of that letter form. You really don't want to be messing with it too much so that it, it starts muddying up the, the letter too, too much. All right, so we have done some mono weight, uppercase, lowercase. We went back to our Helvetica R with the funny little doot. We did some contrast sans serifs. We have done some serif uppercase, serif lowercase. We even did a lowercase serif and just because. And now we're going to get started with the script style. Um, and notice this is script, this is not cursive. Um, cursive is, um, you know, more in line with calligraphy. <laughs> Hi, Roly. He's just smiling at me. Cursive is more in line with um, calligraphy, where it's more like the art of handwriting, whereas hand lettering is really the art of drawing letters. So um, I'm going to switch over here to my script lines. Now, if you guys want this, um, this template is available on our website for free under our download section. So you can just um, download that so you can practice your script or your um, regular lines. Both of those are there for you. Um, but this whole time, you know, I've really been talking about this axis, you know, going down the center of these, um, the center of the letter. Right now, our axis is gonna be uh, turned a wee bit. Um, and it, it's not like a very scientific, um, you know, it's not like, oh, this axis is at 45 degrees or, or anything. Um, I, I really just kind of, uh, lit, laid over some of my existing lettering and found that this was a common angle that I usually use. So that's kind of what I how I created this guide. Um, but you you can do you can start with your script capital T's in uh, from basically two different directions. You can start with the um, what do you call it the crossbar first. You can be very uh, loose with that if you like. And then you can kind of add your, your crossbar later. And notice I'm not really using um, these, these um, lines to contain me very much. I am 
trying to keep the bulk of my letter form between the cap line and the baseline. But as you can see, my um, crossbar just kind of went up and out and all over the place. And that is one of the fun parts about script is that you can be very ornamental with the um, elements of your letter forms. So if you have the space and you would like it to be a little bit more decorative, you can really have a lot of fun with that. But if you're just looking to, you know, do a little bit more of a um, tame version, you can do something like that. Um, I've also seen people draw their T's something like this, but I don't really like drawing them like that. It kind of starts looking like an S or an L to me. So if this, if you like drawing your T's like this, you know, go for it. But um, I'm really in the camp of stem crossbar as two different strokes. Now, if you want to go ahead and, and draw your crossbar first, um, that might be easier for you. So you can do that. You can really um, vary the height of your terminal here. It doesn't really matter, as long as it doesn't start looking like a, d a J. Um, but your uppercase J, as you will recall, is, is composed a bit differently. Um, but if you wanted to do like a little bit more of a decorative um, crossbar, you can do something like that. Um, you know, if you're stressing out trying to meet the uh, stem there with your crossbar, you can be a little bit loose with it. You don't have to exactly, um, you don't exactly have to completely, you know, match it like it's a, uh, you know, hitting a bullseye on a dartboard, you know. You can be a little, you can have it dis uh, dislocated. That's fine too. This almost looks like a stencil or something. Right, Roland? It's crazy. And you'll see that, um, you know, when I draw my stem first, look at the difference between these two letter forms. When I draw my stem first, it's really pinched and tapered at the top. Whereas when I draw my crossbar first, I tend to sort of draw the stem off uh, at like a flat, sort of coming at it almost like it's been just glued on there or something. Um, you know, I, I tend to like this approach a little bit better, but if you like this one, that is fine also. It's really up to you, whatever looks best with your composition, whatever feels best for your tastes. Um, if you want to add a little bit of uh, flourish to the bottom of your crossbar, you can do that too. There's so many different kind of ways you can add some ornament to your letter, letter capital letter T, as long as you are being aware of what's coming after it and what is happening above it and what's happening below it and what's happening before it. So usually you don't do, um, you know, you're not writing a, a whole word in capital letter, capital letters in a script style, because then of course you, this would be a totally insane letter to draw there because your other letter would be, you know, this far away from it. Um, but um, usually you're going to be drawing something. Oh, well, what's this? What's this beautiful word? Oh, I don't know. That's such a nice last name. Oh. Um, or a good second middle name. Or a good second middle name for all of our children. They all got they all got the Calderini uh, last names and got stuck with the torso and somewhere in there. I know, Rolly. I know. One day you'll understand. We couldn't. We couldn't name you Torso and Calderini's, because then you would sound like a pasta dish. Uh, we do call you Torsarini's once in a while. Uh, so as you can see, there's um, you know plenty of space up on that right hand side of this letter, but definitely um, you know this is this is the beginning of a word here. Um, let's draw some lowercase t's. So we're going to start drawing a lowercase t as if it is in uh, the middle of a uh, word. We're going to come up, up 
again in this like zone between the mean line and the cap line. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of space there because we're gonna sort of visually hash out and visually sort of chart the thickness of that stroke. Gio, we're in here, hon. And then you can give yourself a little, that fun little crossbar there. Again, you wanna make sure, um, usually what I'll do is I will finish, finish writing the rest of my word before I give myself that crossbar, just so I don't, um, you know, interfere with any of the other words that are, letters that are coming after it. Um, and with that crossbar, you can do, um, you know, it can be short, it can be ornamental, but let's do that again where we're sort of, you know, sort of giving it a little bit of a plateau there at the top and sort of flicking out the bottom and tapering that crossbar, or I'm sorry, tapering that um, stroke there. Let's give ourselves a nice little straight crossbar. Sometimes you just want to use a, you know, a modest little straight crossbar, you know? Uh, but sometimes you definitely want to uh, use a little bit more of a decorative one, especially if you have two T's in a row, which is kind of fun. Or even um, like a, um, you can do a ITT um, ligature. So like the word fitting would be Something like this. Oh, this has eyes on both sides. I wonder. Hmm. Well, so I sort of, this is probably not the best example because I have two eyes on both sides. But what you could do is something like that, which is a uh, T T an I T T ligature, a ligature being um, words that are connected by crossbars and tittles, or dots on the eyes, if you prefer. Maybe put that eye up a little bit over here. That's a little bit of a funny example here, Arlie. Uh, okay, you know, sometimes that's you know, sometimes it works. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's totally weird. That's hand lettering for you. Sometimes it's not so fitting. Sometimes it's a little bizarre. Um, let's draw another example with the, but you, you see what I'm trying to say is you can connect that, that eye and draw it out as the crossbar there. Um, uh, what is another word that has two, an ITT uh, pitted? Let's try doing that one. Maybe that's a better example. You notice, you know, I, did, I didn't create that thickness on that second T, that first T, because I was just trying to um, just kind of continue with the flow there. But now that I've written this word and I haven't drawn the stem of the D yet, I realized there's an opportunity here to pull that ITT ligature into the, the stem of the D. So let's try that. Let's try... We're gonna create this eye, pull it across the T's and drag it into the D. So that's kind of a cool little thing you can do. Um, and I hope that all of this is just showing you how often you can just kind of stumble across um, little opportunities that give you kind of some fun, um, just some fun, um, um, you know, some some fun decorative um, opportunities. And then you can just kind of pull out that P. So now you have a really uh, sort of illustrated word. Um, and I can't really think of another word that has a ITT ligature in it, but you get the idea. Um, maybe I'll do a, a word now that has 
a capital T and a lowercase t, um, like the word um, title. So I know that this uppercase T, I needed to need sort of get this out of the way a little bit because I'm going to have um, an A sender, the L. Well, you can do a little, there we go. Not all of your uh, crossbars will have an I in front of them. It <laughs> just happens to be that way for today, apparently. That is a word that has an uppercase T and a lowercase T in it. And there we have it. Some practice for you guys on the letter T. Now, if you have these lines and you are um, at home and you want to keep continue, Really um, fill each line with uh, a type of letter. So do your lowercase t's, you know, all the way through. You can do your capital uh, serif t's all the way through. And really just, you know, repeat those shapes. That'll really help you. Um, and yeah, I think that is it for the tease for today. Um, I want to say a special thank you for Britt over at Swell Press. Yesterday, she was mentioning uh, that there is a way to share a VR code for our Venmo. Uh, so I followed her directions. And if you guys are able and willing and want to uh, throw us a couple bucks for these classes, um, we would love you for it. Here is our um, QR code for our Venmo. It's just in my name, Arlie Rose Torsone. So, um, if you want to do that, that is awesome. You also don't have to do it. Um, we are grateful for you guys just being here with us and being a part of this, um, class. I can't believe we are, um, almost through the, the alphabet. I feel like T is the last letter of like I feel like there's like kind of three sections of the alphabet. You have like the ABCs up to, you know, maybe L and then M to T is this like real sturdy chunk in the middle. And then U, W, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. I just kind of these like funky words at the end. Um, but uh, we will begin that weird funky end chapter of our alphabet. But um, we will continue doing some drawing with you guys every day at the same time. Um, we're going to be continuing some lettering, um, just some other lettering basics, like some flourishes and spacing and layouts, um, just because uh, there's kind of no end in sight right now. Uh, but we still enjoy doing this, so we're going to keep practicing with you guys. Um, if you have work that you would like for us to see, uh, tag it with hashtag lettering with ladyfingers on Instagram and we will check it out. We'll comment, we'll share, um, we will love it forever and ever. Um, and tell your friends that we're having this class and that it's a good time. And there's always going to be kids on, on the class apparently. Um, thank you guys again for everything. Thank you for your orders in our online shop at ladyfingersletterpress.com. We really appreciate it. And uh, we really hope everybody is out there staying safe and staying healthy and staying smart, wearing your face masks, limiting your exposure, and taking care of each other because it's uh, kind of a crazy time out there. But hopefully you guys are all staying healthy, and um, we will see you tomorrow at the same time. Thanks. Bye.